back to another episode of Fix My Game. We are here with the reigning IVJJF Absolute World Champion, Victor Hugo, now a four-time world champion. Victor, probably the best accolade of your career. What's your life been like uh, since winning that world title? I just came back to the lab, you know. I think there's a few things that I can, like, fix it. And also just to help my friends. I have a couple of friends competing soon, so they lend their body for me to, to, to prepare to worlds, and now I'm lending my body to, pre to let them prepare to their, their tournaments, you know. Big man flow, sharp as ever, I guess. So let's uh, let's get right into the rolling. Yes, let's See, break uh, some legs today. Oh boy. <laughs> get your strong grips. <laughs> worst comes worst, if I get subbed, then he can cut it. <laughs> breaking that grip. <laughs> <laughs> Fix my game has an X on it, so <laughs> gotta shoot my shot. The theme. 
Corey's, Corey's having flashbacks to the, to the Hodger one right now. Whew, I've been working on mine too, you know? <laughs> Shout out to Hodger, one of the best to ever do it. It was a cool role. Uh, Corey definitely has, you know, high black belt level, but the size matters, you know? <laughs> <laughs> But it is pretty interesting, like, how I got adapt to roll him because we're such, like, we have different sizes. So if I go, like, too crazy on him, he'll find a gap on me and be able to, you know, like, score on that, like, take my back or something like that. Really? I was trying to move uh, fast as him, but whenever I could use the thing that I, I have on him, which is the weight and size, I used it. So I think also that's a good uh, thing that I like to do when I find someone smaller that will slow them down, you know? It's almost like they're pulling the park brake. Like, we move fast, I get you a good position, I get tight, I use my weight, I tire you out, now you're kind of like not as fast as you were before. So now I'm moving faster than you, you know? So that's like a little bit of a strategy that I do when I'm rolling this, with smaller guys, you know? I, I definitely yeah. felt that you, Victor, were, were moving with me until the moment where I gave you a little gap, mm -hmm. and then that was the gap where you just kind of took everything away from me. I, I'm curious how you developed that, or like where yeah. that speed and that mobility and that, that flow came from. I think it's because being a big guy like me, um, I gotta be, I gotta, I gotta be ready to not, not having like the best conditions, right? I don't have anyone like me to train with, and the, 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 the being fluid is it comes down to like you know mindset and training. You know, I can be like an asshole and like show up and like beat everyone up. As a big guy in the room, you gotta be, you gotta be have those things in mind, you know, because you need people to train. The more people you can train, the better for you because you're gonna be facing different challenges and getting better in different positions you should. So. That's how I like to think as far as like training, you know. I want Corey to come back one day, so I don't want to give him the worst <laughs> experience ever. <laughs> so I guess to start uh, that, that last segment we did, uh, you had me start in my best position, which I feel is back control, um, and you worked your way out of it onto my back. Uh, there were a couple things that I felt you were exploiting there, but I want to hear what you think about maybe some uh, adjustments I could make in that position to be stronger there. So one thing that I, that I, that I would say is like, I gave you the start position, but there's gotta be some sort of like bait that you gotta be set to, you know? I think whenever it started, you kinda were too tight to my head and your grip was too hard here. So I kinda could like feel your intentions already. I'm like, he doesn't want me to, you know, get my head to the other side, cause he want to keep my head here, so, cause here is like his choke is stronger. So I know already what I'm fighting against. I think we started you like right here already, right? Mm -hmm. Boom, right here. What I would do is, I wouldn't grab as tight, but all I would do is I would favor this side here instead of this as usually we do, right? So even though my head is tight here, it's not tight here, I still can put my body tight. Now what I'm doing, Corey, is trying to avoid you fall to this side, right? And as far as like what I see what you're trying to do. So to avoid you to fall to this side, sometimes I'm even gonna take this hook out and put this hook behind your knee. Cause now what are you gonna think? You're gonna think that you can fall to this way, right? Try to, try to fall this way. If I start elevating this knee, look. So now I think as like a defense person, you kind of like guessing a little bit like, oh, why did he took a hook out? Usually I'll take this hook out because I trust my ability to put it back in and also because I'm looking for a submission because I already have scored. But one thing that I did during Brazilian Nationals that people didn't really understand is uh, Steve was telling me to keep the head loose, you know, like create space between my shoulder and your head. Why do I do that? I do that so the gap between my elbow and your neck, it's, it's filled up. Right now there is a huge gap. If you want to put a hand in between there, put a hand in between there, they'll get there. It's not really like practical, like don't, people don't do that, but you just show how loose I am. So what I like to do is I like to push your body that way, I like to come up and boom, and I come up here. Now my head is no more doing that thing that you're doing with your head, it's my shoulder. Boom. See how much pressure I have there? Now you have things to think about. So now maybe if you're protecting my, my hook again, you're not gonna be as, 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 as worried about the hook. Maybe you're gonna start fighting the choke or something, I get the hook, and maybe I'll let the other hook out. Now what they usually do is they start coming out. I come on top, and I start choking them. You know, so on the back escape, on the back attacks, you know, depending on the situation, I like to, you know, sometimes I open one door, because I know you're gonna take that door, and it allows me to set up my next attack. You know, that's what I, 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 I would play more. Because sometimes, depending on the level, you show what you want right away, they're gonna give everything that they can to like fight that, and then it's gonna end up like being zero, zero. One counters the other, you know? Basically, you're gonna pull this slack, right? So you're right there, boom, you get, the, you get the here. Like, maybe you have two hooks. You have two hooks, perfect. So, gather my grip, get, get the collar, 
and you don't have to grab as tight because now what you're gonna do is you're gonna come up to this elbow. Now drive, yes. See how tight that is? In your head, you're free, which allows you to move more freely. And a lot of times what I do is from here, I'm already feeling choked. If you wanna add uh, even more pressure, you're gonna start bringing your shoulder more close and start pulling the, yes, I'm gonna tap here. I'm either gonna tap or pass out. But a lot of times, whenever you're facing guys that are really strong and they're really muscly, I open the door for them. So get it, tight it. Yes, now they're gonna start doing this. And I choke myself. And then also you have a good setup for a uh, uh, boy in there and all that. I'm pretty sure that's how I submitted Honorio in, in the finals for the Brazilian mm -hmm. Nationals. And he's a big guy, he's a strong guy, you know, but I was able to, to finish that. And it's just like positioning your body in a position that, in a way that you're gonna like have more strength that you should have. But it's just like pulling your weight, right? And it feels pretty tight. And when I loosen up here, if my head is tight and I pull up my elbow, my head's here, I can't come up anymore. Mm -hmm. But when my head's up here, my hips are free. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, what, uh, I, I, would, I wouldn't lock myself on there as much, so to go there, put your head tight. What do you feel? You feel like you can't move as much? I feel like I'm stuck to you. Yeah, plus I think like this head here like allows me to like right. knock you over more. So as I pull that out, I move myself far. Yes, exactly. My hips are Because lighter. my goal here would be come up. I would really like to come up. Come up to like S mouth, boom. Yes, I feel pretty strong there. You know, maybe some guys are gonna be worried about half guard and you took me out already, mm -hmm. you know? So yes, I don't really use the head digging in as much. I just like to use my shoulder there. Speaking of kind of new innovations, new tricks, uh, that double knee bar you hit on Eric in the absolute final uh, was something that, you know, you might have seen once or twice, but it's not something that you very often see set up in such a kind of calculated manner as mm -hmm. the way you set it up against Eric. Uh, so the knee bar is a big part of my uh, all my games is brown belt, right? Since so I was able to actually like legally start attacking knees. I don't think of like a knee bar in any different way than an arm bar, you know? I really think that I think like people don't think as much on the arm bars. They don't keep the leg as connected as they should. They're more worried about like hips. But if I try to get my hips higher here, they're not gonna have so much pressure as here. Whenever I do this, usually the, the, the hands pops up for an arm bar. Same thing for a knee bar, you know? And against Eric, he's really flexible, you know? He does really good at defending the legs. So what I told B is like, I'm gonna have way more control if I stack one leg on top of the other than just one uh, itself, you know? And the position that he went up on, because of his lapel guard, it was uh, really proper for that, you know? And that's what happened. He, as he swept me, he had like long legs, so he was spread out like this. I got under like this. But as he had, as he had the knee, uh, uh, my sleeve, I ended up knocking him over. I'm pretty sure I had two legs bitten like this, you know? So whenever I had him here, I would have the chance to separate and attack one. But what I ended up doing is I ended up crossing and doing this, all right? I'm not sure if it's perfectly how it was there, but that's what I had on my mind. If I can attack one, why not attacking two? Because even here, if I start attacking you, Corey, you can start, yeah, turn them onto me, right? If I start stacking them, turn onto me. It's really hard for you to defend the angle. Anywhere he goes, you're gonna start tapping that, right? The main challenge for, for that position is the entry. How am I gonna get this guy with both legs extended inside my 50-50? As he swept me, I got under, boom. And this is my favorite setup for leg locks, right? I like this a lot. But I'm pretty sure one of the legs was stuck in a lapel, which made it easy for me to stack one leg on top of the other. So as I stack one leg on top of the other, I start bringing this one over, and boom, he was probably right there. Nice, now what I started doing is crossing this one over, and now I have it here, boom. And if you see, it's almost like you need buying yourself. Your bottom leg is giving me more leverage onto submitting your, your top one. So basically, that's how it happened. Boom. If you look at my previous knee bars, I always like to bring the triceps on the ankle and I always like to keep the space tight here. Now everything's just gonna be about extending my body. Just to make Boom, here. exactly. Now he's here and then you're gonna bring the leg on top. And do I kick out at the yes. same time? Yes, exactly. And I couldn't see, are you crossing your ankles or just keeping everything you tight? You can keep figure four. Okay. Nice. This now, is whatever my stack. you decide, you're gonna bring it on top. Is the one that you're gonna bring over the uh, over your yeah. So here, perfect. Can you do? Nice. Do you think you can bring your armpit on there? 
Yes. yes. There you go. Nice. Now I'm going to turn. Mm -hmm. Yep. Probably like that. That's how we work. I'm going to start breathing. Tap. Can you, can you breathe open, like open side? Boom. There we go. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, see? Now you have the perfect match. Now this one on the armpit. Yes. Uh -huh. There you go. Now you have it. Now I start breathing. Tap. All right. Last thing I want to talk to you about is uh, flying triangle. So if you... Absolutely not. Hey, I've done so, a couple trying triangles. Uh, flying triangles, you know. Victor, thanks for having us here at Six Blades Lake Travis. Really valuable stuff. The back control mechanics and some of the strategic kind of traps in the back control. And of course, that, that knee bar. Uh, very representative of your game, your style. Thank you. And some of the stuff you've done best. Thank you.